I'm Jacob Thompson and I'm 17 years old and I fly a 1947 J3 Piper Cub named Woodstock. Go ahead, so tell me your history in aviation. So my history in aviation began when my dad was a Air Force pilot back 28 years ago. He uh, flew many airplanes like C-141 Starlifter, a T-38 Talon, and a C-17 Goldmaster III. Um, right before he got out of the Air Force, he wanted to get into general aviation, which he began flying for and volunteering for. A, it's called Aviation Explorers, which I'm a part of. Aviation Explorers is uh, to promote uh, aviation to younger generations. He volunteered his time as a CFI. He taught many kids how to fly. And he uh, showed many people how to solo, he taught them how to become an aviator. So when I was about 12, my brother was a avi aviation explorer. He, uh, would, they would all meet on Saturdays and I used to go with them. My dad would take me as just to watch, but not to say anything, he said. But I began to learn on my own to what everything was. A map, what this meant, what that meant if that meant a tower was there at an airport. So I learned what, I learned what things were starting to be and learned about aviation. So I started going to ground school more and more and more so that I learned that I wanted to be a pilot. Then I really started to learn that I wanted to be a pilot when I hung out here. My brother's friends uh, would hang out here and they would go flying. Uh, one of our good friends, Ed Duckworth, owned a clipped wing J3. And it used to be stored at Falcon on the north side. And all of our, all of our my brother's friends and him used to fly it. It was a fun airplane to fly. Luke got about 30 hours in that airplane. But I was at the point where I was in the training of I could barely taxi the airplane by myself. I had to have someone sitting there and help me taxi a little cub. And then it began to Dutch rolls. Dutch rolls were my favorite thing in there. To going before, uh, before school every, pretty much every day is go fly with dad. To go down to breakfast, to have fun with different things. But then we decided, since after they sold that airplane, let's get our own cub. Let's buy our own cub. And uh, let's let's make our own memories with our own airplane. Uh, we found an airplane in Maine. It was a Piper Cub. My dad went out there since he's a United Airlines pilot. He uh, flew non-rev out there to go see the Piper Cub. When he uh, when saw it, he sent us a bunch of pictures, and it was a very very nice J3 Piper Cub. And so we came back. We talked to our uh, got a loan on it and started the final process of buying this airplane. We uh, bought it in October of I think it was 2016. So we've almost had a four years now. Uh, my dad went and picked up delivery about two weeks later after we bought it. He flew with the owner one last time and he flew started his adventure back home to Mesa, Arizona. So he started the adventure and about took him about four days to get to Tulsa, Oklahoma. He left it there in a hangar. One of our friends, uh, my grandparents' friends, has a hangar at the Claremore Airport. He left it there for two weeks. He had to go fly for airlines and he came back with my brother, Austin. Uh, my brother was a aviator. He had his private pilot's license and tailwheel endorsement at the time. So they went and picked it up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they made a day trip out of it. They went to Stearman Field in uh, uh, Kansas. They spent the afternoon there in Stearman Field, and they flew back to Claremore that night. And the next day, they uh, started the venture back to Arizona. Well, it started off, they flew from Claremore to Elk City, Oklahoma, got some gas, and they're on their way back to Arizona. They took off out of Elk City, Oklahoma and experienced some fog. And they were approaching a couple 300 feet down and watching windmills go by them. So they decided it was probably the best idea to turn around and head back to Elk, Elk City for the night and park the airplane. So they flew the cub behind me back to Elk City, Oklahoma. And they spent three days there because of weather. They were caved in with weather. Then the uh, three days came upon, it was a great day, sunny day. They took off out of Elk City, Oklahoma. They started their adventure home. They spent the night in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Got a couple, stopped for gas a couple times and had to go to the bathroom. Then they are on their final, they stopped in Sholo, Arizona on their last stop of, before they got home. And all of us were at the airport already, waiting their arrival of the Cub. So when the Cub was on its final descent back into Mesa, Arizona, into Falcon Field here, we, my brother's friends, said, do you want to go see the Cub? Do you want to do a formation flight in with it? So we made a formation arrival with the, the J3 behind me. We took an Arrow and we took an RV-8. 
we had a three chip formation with uh, Cub as a lead and uh, the two, the RV8 and the arrow off the wings of the Cub. We made a, uh, we made it probably five miles in and we broke and the Cub did its uh, short approach for runway, I think it was four right, into Falcon Field and uh, the Cub arrived at Falcon Field for the first time and will be here for many, many years. Then that day when I landed and saw the Cub for the first time was, was our airplane. It was the airplane that I'm going to learn how to fly in. So when I was 14 and a half, I wanted to learn how to fly the Cub behind me. This is the plane that I wanted to first solo in. And when I became the age of 16, I did that. But before that, I had to do a couple things of training. Every day I would come out here with my dad. We would go over ground school. What a tail wheel can do. But the, but the fun of the tail wheel, well, what the scary side of a tail wheel can be, is to the scary thought of I could, I could hurt myself with this hand propping. When I came out here with my dad, we would talk about the, we'd started off small with taxiing, the taxiing a tail wheel with the S turning to make sure you're clear in front of you, to now steering it straight at high speed, to seeing your visuals on, run, at a, on the runway when you land. It's not a Cessna 172 where you see out the front. It's, it's an airplane that you have to look out your sides and, or look at your peripheral vision and to see what's in front of you and around you. But when I was leading up to my 16th birthday, I wanted to do it on my 16th birthday because that, that would have been a big, big cool step in my life that I would really appreciate when I look back when I'm older and knew that I flew when I could have and started when I could have. So it was probably about three months before my solo and we started, we started the process of building up to my solo. So we'd go out and we'd do stalls. We'd do six to seven stalls. Then we'd go out and we'd climb really high in the air, about 6,000 feet in a cub and we would spin it. So we'd spin left and we'd spin right and learn how to get out of a spin if I ever got myself into a spin. But then my landings at first were getting, getting to the point where I was stalling five feet off the ground and you know, I was plonking it in. But then I really got to the point of learning how I can, I can get to the airplane about a couple of inches off the ground and stalling it and making a beautiful landing out of it. So then it led up about a month to my solos. We were flying about two to three days a week before school and after school. We would go out here, we'd do takeoff landings, we would go down to Coolidge, auction, and different airports around the Phoenix area, and we would do landings uh, to three points to uh, wheel landings. So in May 15th of 2018, I went and soloed. So that day, the morning prior, I, mean, I was in high school still. I went uh, with my dad before school. We got up early and we came out here and we did talked about some things for my solo. And we went flying, we did went out to the area and we practiced some stalls again. Turn stalls, high, um, steep turn stalls and different configurations of a stall. But then we came back and did, I think it was probably four landings. And when we landed, we came back and I went to school that day. But then after school, I was so excited to go flying. Well, during school, I kept calling Falcon ATIS, the ATIS, the, the airport, and kept calling about every single 30 minutes at school. So I'd put my headphones in and would call during class to see what the winds were. The limit on the cub of the winds about 20 miles an hour, straight cross. But for our first solo, they're not going to do that configuration for me. It's going to be more in the, the little numbers. Uh, that day we went out there right before my solo. It's probably 30 minutes before my solo. We went and did two uh, three points and one wheel landing. And then we came back and landed and my dad got out of the airplane and says, you're going to go do this. You're gonna go do three landings all by yourself. Then my brother came out and gave me some uh, words of advice and put some GoPro cameras on so we'd get that moment captured. And I started. He started the airplane. He hand propped me and said good luck. And I was set free. I attacked called tower, called ground. I mean, and Falcon Ground Cup six six zero four tails base of the tower. Don't know the information that day was and first initial solo, three touch and goes and. They came back, you're clear to taxi 22 left via Delta. So it was 22 left via Delta that day. I taxied out and I was taxiing out and the tower, the tower contacts me and goes, um, what'd they say? Well, there was my dad off the right wing in his truck who's gonna follow me down to the runway. He had a handheld and just in case I got scared or anything up there. But he, the tower, the tower contacted me and said, is the truck off your right wing with you? And affirmative, Cub Zero for Hotel. 
and uh, my dad contacted him. He said, "I do have a radio in this truck." And they said, the lady in the tower said, uh, "Let the birdie, uh, let the little uh, bird fly." And I thought that was pretty cool to see the tower. They knew the, how big of a moment this was for me, as well as my dad and my family to see this. So I got down to the run-up area. I, just, I knew our, everything was all checked and ready to go. Just flew at four, about ten minutes before I flew out, went flying again. So it was my, the run-up area. I used it as a uh, get-ready zone. So I got got in the, the my uh, correct mindset that I needed to be in to go flying. Of I'm doing this all on my own. I don't have my dad right right on me with the stick to take over if I need it. So I got got done with my uh, get ready check, but in the run up area, I taxied out to two two left via uh, two two left uh, via Delta using via Delta, and uh, contact the tower. Uh, Cub zero four tells ready to go runway two two left, and. The guy in the tower was very nice, and he uh, gave me the option of whatever direction I wanted to do my first solo in. He uh, gave me a left pattern or a right pattern to my discretion. So I decided to do a left pattern because of if the everyone was out there on the left, I didn't want to go to the other runway where everyone wasn't. So I got on the runway, he cleared me for takeoff, and he told me either direction you want to go, and you have no one in front or behind you at your you take off at your discretion. So I took off on two two left put the power in and about a hundred feet I was off very fast um, wasn't expecting that but I was with getting my dad out of the plane uh, not to say he's fat or anything but uh, got out of the airplane then I took off and I just didn't want my, th to my mind to think about the people so I said don't worry about the people I took off and made my left pattern uh, for 2-2 two, two left at Falcon and started that left turn it's about 600 feet off the ground about half midfield so I started the turn before I even turned uh, downwind they already cleared me a land again so I started my uh, got down to about a thousand about half halfway down crosswind and started down downwind and getting ready to do all my uh, approach uh, checklist of mixture uh, my carp heat and everything so I did all that and when I made that final turn to base was I was getting real of I'm gonna land this cub by myself well I was expecting the winds the winds were getting a little higher they were getting gusty they're but gusting up to 18 now so I came turn turn final and remember I had a cramp in my right leg that day is was, was turning final I was trying to get that uh, cramp out of my right leg because I think it was just ex excitement from what I was about to do came over and had the worst landings of my life in the cup those days. Came down and I bounced it on the runway. It was safe, but it was not the prettiest. But got it on the runway and I took back off and I was about to do that two more times. For my third landing I did it semi-decent. I mean, it's not ground loop, still sitting behind me. So I taxied back in, they congr congratulated me that day and said congratulations um, for my first solo. And I went over to the terminal at Falcon Field, and many people were there that I haven't seen in a long time. Congratulated me on my first solo since this was a big deal in my life. 16 years of age, and I didn't have a driver's license yet. I could ride my airport, uh, my bike to the airport, and I could fly this behind me at that my age. So when I got out of the airplane, uh, the first thing was to do was rip my shirt. Of course, you got to do that. So in this, uh, my dad's done two of them now, of uh, in the family. He did my middle brother and my uh, me now. So he took me and they, he explained to everyone what was happening because some people didn't know there because people weren't from aviation that were coming to see me. So he took the scissors and he cut the back of my shirt off. And it was a one of my old Piper Cub shirts. So that Piper Cub shirt was uh, torn off and it knew that I could go fly by myself and he didn't have to tug on my shirt now. And so now that shirt is hanging in my uh, room in a frame with all the signatures of everyone that was there and a picture of that day that will be uh, hung there for many, many years to see. I'm Jacob Thompson, and I'm 17 years old, and I fly a 1947 J3 Piper Cub named Woodstock, November 6604 Hotel, Mesa, Arizona, Falcon Field.